Welcome to the Offshore Club's fun-filled, fact-filled, fast-paced blockbuster podcast, Coffee with Karim Carter, coming to you exclusively from where the sun never sets on the good life at a great price. And now, fill up your favorite coffee mug and join your expert and your guide, Karim Carter Clues. Hi, this is Karim Carter Clues, and welcome to what I think is our 18th, our 18th get-together. Uh... Jeez, that's more than four months. It's four months we've been getting together every Monday. And I want you to know I love every second of it. And fortunately, I think a lot of you do too, because I get a lot of great uh, emails from you and even some phone calls, which I, which I appreciate. I'm always thrilled to hear from you, thrilled to talk with you, uh, because the the Offshore Club, offshore.club, that's where I always go every day, you go to offshore.club. Uh, it's you. You are the Offshore Club, and Coffee with Kara Carter is just my chance to get a talk with you about what we're doing, uh, what you can do uh, to live the, the, the good life at a great price uh, offshore. And today, we're going to take a little different approach. You know, we normally talk about a day in the life and Mad Max, all this kind of stuff. Today, I've gotten so many, so many great emails from you all that I want to just answer some of those questions today, okay? Because if they fall into general categories. So rather than taking just specific emails, I'm going to go over the categories with you that they fall into because they're great questions. They're great questions and comments. And again, keep them coming, okay? Keep them coming. I, I think the best place to send them, and I answered a bunch yesterday into those who just got those responses. If I was a little slow, forgive me. Uh, but it was great to hear from you. Uh, write to me at carabcarter7 at gmail.com. Okay, you got that? It's carabcarter7 at gmail.com. And I promise you, I'll be back to you and uh, open up our dialogue together. Okay. And so the, the, the questions I get, as I mentioned, fall into a number of categories. So let's, let's just take them one at a time because I have a feeling, you know, when people ask these questions, they're speaking. Uh, for themselves, but they're not speaking by themselves because a lot of you, a lot of you I know have the, the exact same questions and I get them wherever I go, you know, because now more and more when I go places, people say the, the, yesterday I ran into to a, a old friend of mine I hadn't talked to an agency, a great architect, master architect, Jeff. And, uh, and he, he, he had some questions for me and, and he said, you know, I, I watch, Coffee with Karen Carter every Monday. I had no idea. I absolutely had no idea. Okay. So there are a lot of you out there like that. And, and Jeff's questions fell into these same categories. So let me go through these and see if some of them apply to you. If not, send yours in, uh, carabcarter7 at gmail.com. Um, and, 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 it, and, and I'll get to you specifically with them. I promise, you know, it, look, if you take the time and have the kindness to, to write to me, I'm sure as heck uh, going to write back because I, because I deeply, deeply appreciate it. So let's, so let's go through the categories. Okay. See if you can identify with these. First one is first question I always get, whether it's um, somewhere where somebody recognizes me or in letters is really Carter, how safe is Central America? You know, because we hear all these horrible things, you, you know, the, the, the MS-13, that's what, <laughs> MS-13, I'll tell you something even funnier, is, is some people say to me, but how about uh, Pablo uh, Escobar, you know, in, in Colombia? And I tell him, well, unless he comes back from the dead, I don't think it's going to be a problem because he's been dead since 1993. <laughs> what happens is these things get ingrained, okay? And of course, our State Department love and our CIA love to badmouth Central America because, as I told you a couple of weeks ago, if you make the move, which I think you should, they can't collect as much money from you and they can't keep you, as the Rolling Stones say, under my thumb, okay? So they don't like the idea that people are, but let me use the right word, escaping, all right? And people are massive, massive. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you about one of the one of the offshore realtors that, that, that I think you're going to be one of talking to. Uh, the gentleman named Larry Schlesser told me yesterday, he's Roatan Island, incredible. And I lived there for six months. 
months right off uh, Honduras. And, and he said, in 20 years, I have never seen as many people wanting to move down here. And you know, because you and I talk every Monday, there's a good reason for that. You know, there's twofold reason. One, because it's great down there. And two, the Mad Max report, you have problems up here. So let's talk about this safety thing. Safe, how safe am I? You're safe. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Look, you're as safe there you know, as you are here nowadays, all right? Look, violent crime in this country has surged through the ceiling. If, if the mainstream media, because they love Biden, will not even report it, but violent crime in this country is through the ceiling, all right? Um, it's not down there. It, let's take Nicaragua. Nicaragua's murders per 100,000 is eight, eight. The U.S. is five, if you believe the figures our government puts out, is five. You know, when you're seeing 112 people shot every weekend in Chicago, it's a little hard to believe, but let's accept it. So Nick, that would mean Nicaragua's is three above. Some of the country's worse, sure. You get El Salvador because of some of the sections there, some of the sections of Honduras, uh, are up 60, 60, which actually is the same as Chicago and Detroit and Baltimore. Okay. So, you know, it, it, the, I always tell people, you, you, let's take, let's take Honduras because that there, that I know most about, you know, my wife just got back, by the way, just got back to a wonderful trip to the beach house we bought there that I've shown you pictures of probably more times than you wanted to see them, but I'm excited about it. I want you to be excited. And there's a house right next to mine, like mine, $35,000 on the beach, not ocean view, ocean, on the ocean that I'd love for you to come and, and be be my neighbor there. So La Ceiba, our home is 10 minutes outside of La Ceiba, which is the tourism capital of the city, about 200,000. I'd walk down the streets of La Ceiba any section of La Ceiba, any time, to be honest with you, I would never walk down the streets of any section of Baltimore, or Detroit, or, you know, uh, Minneapolis or, or Seattle nowadays, okay? Um, but there you can. Now, San Pedro Sula, yeah, okay. Be if you go to San Pedro Sula, which is about a million people in Honduras, Honduras has three big cities, just FYI. I think you find this interesting. Tegucigalpa is the political capital. That's where the politicians are. Stay away from there just because they're there. But the then uh, San Pedro Sola, right in the middle of the country, has second largest port in Central America, is the industrial city. Uh, reminds me a lot of Baltimore when I was a kid, okay? Because um, it's still a lot safer than Baltimore is now. Um, and and then La Ceiba is, the, the, as I said, the tourist capital. But San Pedro Sula, yeah, you need to be a little careful there, okay? Uh, back before I bought homes in Honduras, my wife and I would, she was, she's from that area. So we, she's not a criminal. We would stay, we would stay at the, at the, uh, uh, at the Princess Hotel or one of the others there and walk down to the mall, which is one of the most gorgeous, beautiful inner city malls you've ever seen, okay? And I felt very safe. Walk to local restaurants. You know, there are areas probably, I don't know because I, I don't know where they are that I that I probably wouldn't go in, but I would wager I'd feel safer walking in 90 percent of even San Pedro Sola or in in most any city down there than I would six blocks from my home in New York, Pennsylvania. I'm just going to be honest with you. OK, so is it safe? It's safe. It, it is safe like any place else. Uh, you, you know, it, you pick your spots and there's some areas you just don't go. Now, I will say there are no no go zones like there are in every American city now. Uh, no. But, it, it, but you know, it, and you're not going to have people run by and grab your purse and all this kind of stuff. All that is just contrived by the mainstream media in this country. Keep in mind, the mainstream media slogan, I remember, I spent over 40 years in Washington working with all these top reporters there. You name one, Jake Tapper, all these people. Um, and their slogan is, if it bleeds, it leads. Okay. And so you can have the most wonderful things going on in the world throughout Central America, which you do, and you're not going to hear about them. 
uh, one thing happens and it's, oh my God. So, so that's the answer to your question. And I know a lot of you have that. Yeah, you're going to be safe. You're going to be safe. Okay, most of you, in fact, are probably going to be living in um, in in communities that are mostly um, American, Canadian, that type of thing. So you're not even going to be out in in the the mainstream areas. And I purposely did not do that. I lived there for a year, and I lived out in uh, El Pino, beautiful, wonderful little community in Honduras, and uh, and it was just wonderful. And I took the chicken buses we've talked about every day to La Ceiba. And so it was, uh, but for most of you, you're going to live probably in gated communities. As a matter of fact, the one my wife just got back with the home we bought is in a gated community. And frankly, this one is mostly uh, North Americans, uh, Canadians, Americans. Uh, you're going to find a lot of Italians for some reason, um, which I like, of course, because my mother was born in Italy. Um, so answer the question. Yeah, you're going to be safe. You're going to be safe. Please trust me on that. Ignore the negativism. You know, every day you have to do it anyway. Every day anyway, you know, eschew the negativism and and just enjoy yourself, okay? Just enjoy yourself. So that's the first question I get the most times. It, what is it safe? I say, okay. So I, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps, all right? Hopefully that helps. Um, the second question I get most is cost of living. Okay, once you're there, you're enjoying it, you feel safe. How much is it going to cost you to live there? That's one of the best parts of all. I I always say if you in place in Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, in those countries, if you can have two thousand dollars a month, fifteen hundred to two thousand a month, you are going to live very, very, very well. Okay. Very well. Um you, you know, you're gonna live like your upper class in this country you're going to be the part of the 1%, all right, in those countries. If you can have 2000 bucks a month, um, your, your rent multi-bedroom home, if you want to rent a home, you're probably going to get four or $500. Uh, I would, if I were you, just save up the money and buy a place. Um, and I'm going to get into real estate in a few minutes, so I'm not going to go into costs there right now. So please bear with me. But, but you know, it, I would, I would, Rule of thumb, uh, in the countries I just named, your pr cost of living is probably going to be a quarter to a third of what it is up here, okay? A quarter to a third. And and that's living very, very nicely. Living very, very nicely. Um, keep in mind, you know, there's no heating bill. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to buy a snow shovel. Um, and and the you don't have the horrific taxes up that you have up here. I got to be honest with you. If I didn't have the federal, state, and local government always coming to me with the palm out, where are going to my palm out? Money, 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 money. Uh, it, I really wouldn't have that many expenses up here, to be honest with you, uh, because I, I own my home. I, you know, I don't, I don't like buying on time. But down there, um, as we're going to in just a minute, buy your own home. Now, let me say that yeah, Panama and Costa Rica, because I do get questions about that. And matter of fact, some people say to me, how come you always talk about Honduras, El Salvador, Belize, um, Guatemala, uh, and you don't talk about Costa Rica and Panama? Well, let me be honest with you. The reason I don't is because the cost of living there is a little higher. I mean, they're wonderful countries, fantastic countries, beautiful. Uh, the most modern of any countries down there are Panama and uh and um, um, Costa Rica, but the cost of living is a little higher. Okay, I'd say you know instead of a quarter to a third, I'd say half. You know, um, and to me that's that's kind of a lot. Just I'm just giving you my own opinion. Right? It's just kind of a lot. So, but still, you know, living at, at half the price you pay up here for to live in the sun, sand, and surf is pretty darn good. Okay. It's still pretty darn good. So cost of living, a fraction of what you pay here. You, you remember, uh, if those of you who go to Offshore.club regularly and watch the, the uh, or receive the, the Offshore Club Gazette or watch the podcast every day, uh, the, the family man, Pat Heber, talked about medical care. Um, he had kidney stones, okay? 
had to go to the, the, the hospital and all day long and treatments and x-rays and CAT scans, the whole nine yards. And here in this country, God knows what that would cost you. Thousands of dollars. Probably. You know, Nicaragua is 58 bucks, 58 bucks. OK, my wife just was while well, she was down there, as I said, she just got back from Honduras, uh, wanted to have some molars removed. Uh, it was uh, the total, I think, for four of them or something was like uh, maybe 600 bucks. OK, and, and don't and look. Some of you are saying, yeah, I guess so. When they use an exacto knife, they don't use an exacto knife. <laughs> they, have, they have all the modern facilities down there. They have modern hospitals, modern dental, dental offices. Uh, and part of it is that they the, the cost of living is just lower. You know, you can't charge people. You can only charge with the traffic will bear. And also keep in mind, our medical costs in this country are out of whack. The average rate worldwide is 5 to 10%. Uh, our country is 17 percent. Um, it's gotten out of hand. And, so, you know, you, you and I, all of us know something's got to give, you know, uh, something's got to give. Big Med is making it obscene, obscene uh, profit. So and down there, you don't have that. So you're going to get great medical care, great medical care. OK, for a fraction of the price, you know, I'd say getting those molars done up here probably would cost, what, 10 times as much. And beautifully done, perfectly done job. Okay. So cost of living. I hope that answers your questions about cost of living. You know, uh, uh, Marie Amit asked me specifically. She said, you know, I'm on a limited income, Social Security. I make, I get about 2300 a month Social Security. I said, take the money and run <laughs> straight down to Central America. And you really, literally, you're not going to just live the good life at a great price. You're going to live the great life at a great price. And so that's my advice to you on that and the cost of living. The the rating the countries, because I get that a lot. I get that a lot. I was I was at a, at a reception the other day and I was at the table and one two of the people of the of the eight people at the table are, go to offshore dock club and and thank God and thank them. They they do they watch uh, every Monday uh, coffee with Carib Carter. Um let me have some of my coffee here. And they said, well, rate the countries, rate the countries. And and so my uh, so let me just give you my rating. And look, this is purely subjective. You may have an entire once you get down there, hopefully soon, hopefully soon, you may have an entirely different rating. But my rating right now in terms of quality of life, return on investment, cost of living, the whole nine yards. I'm going to go with Nicaragua, number one. I just am. I, 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 I think the, the atmosphere that Ortega has created for his people there, tremendous freedom, tremendous freedom. Don't believe what the press and this, you know, the deep state, the government in this country tells you they hate the guy have for 40 years. But, the, you know, no big drug problem, not like we have here. Um, even in Managua, their city. No, no. Um, the the uh, as I said, crime, the safest city in Central America, beautiful, stunningly beautiful city has the gorgeous beaches, the rainforest mountains, everything you'd want in that respect. And wonderful people. So I'm going to rate Nicaragua number one. Uh, and part of it, I'm just going to be honest, is that, OK, and when I say this, some are going to say, what are you nuts? I just happen to like Ortega. OK, is he a dictator? He's an elected president, and I don't think at this point he's any more oppressive than a lot of what we're getting up here now. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of Mad Max moment in a minute and tell you something that, that I can guarantee you he ain't doing to his people. Um, with the whole COVID business, he did not do to his people what was done to the American people. He just didn't, and they have no COVID problem. Okay. Uh, so Nicaragua is a wonderful country, beautiful country. They have baseball, baseball. The, the, the um, remember the Nicaraguan character on the, the on the Saturday Night Live, who was at the, the, at the function where they gave him an award. He said, baseball being very, very good to me. Well, it's because they have a lot of baseball. And so, you know, if you, if you're a baseball fan, I don't go to games in this country anymore because I, I don't. I consider it more of a political movement than a game now, quite frankly. Still a game there. 
baseball is still a game. You go, you watch a game, you don't have to worry about political movements and hating this flag and hating these color people. You don't have that there. Okay. So it's just a nice life. It's a good, pleasant life uh, with a lot of wonderful people. So Nicaragua, number one, number two is Honduras for me, for obvious reasons. I mean, my wife is from there. I own two homes there. I want to buy more. Um, I'll explain why in just a second. Um, wonderful people. Look, I lived there, you know, on the island, Roatana Island for six months. I lived on the mainland, El Pino for a year. I never had a bad incident. Never had a bad incident with people saying or doing anything to me that, you know, uh, made me feel that they didn't like me because I was a, a, a gringo, okay, which gringo, by the way, is not a bad word. They don't let people tell you that. You know, it's not a bad word. It means it's their term for white people like ours, Latinas or Hispanics. Um, never had a bit of trouble. Very polite people. Uh, they don't, just like in any other state, do not speak, do not press one for English folks because it ain't happening. But they will come up to you. There's always at least one around who while you're having trouble. I stumbled a lot, folks. I'm just not good with languages. I was saying the other day to somebody, when you're from Baltimore, English is a second language, okay? So I'm not good with languages, but every time I had a problem, like even ordering coffee with, uh, with sweet and low uh, in packets, not put in the coffee. And anyway, so that's pretty simple. It ain't if you don't speak the language. And somebody would come and say, Senor is is uh, in paqueta alado, okay, to the sides. That's it. That's what I want. He got it. You got it. So very nice people, incredible cost of living, breathtakingly beautiful, breathtakingly beautiful. It is just the, the white sand beaches, the turquoise waters. I wish, look, I'm going to invite every one of you. Come down to my home in, that we just bought on the beach in Honduras. It's at La Ceiba Beach Club is the name of the community. Look it up. Look it up. Um, and you're just going to be stunned at how the, the it, I showed you a couple. Remember last couple of weeks, a week ago, or so two weeks ago, I showed you some of the videos and pictures my wife sent back from, we call our home uh, La Playa de Rachel, for obvious reasons. La Playa is the beach of Rachel, my wife. So, um, yeah. So Honduras to me is number two. I would place Guatemala number three, just because it is. I think, uh, I think it's the it's more industrialized. Um, it is uh, very much like Honduras, but a little. They have a little more money, so you don't run into quite as much poverty, which which hurts you. You know, it hurts us if we see that. You're not going to see as much of that. It's just more industrialized, uh, but very very much the same. Very much the same. The city, Guatemala City, is lovely. You can live in the new section. You can live in the Antigua section. Um, which is like living in, in old cities in America before they became like they are now. Um, just a great lifestyle. And, and, and again, wonderful people, uh, excellent food, excellent food. Uh, I, next I go Belize. Now Belize is just, um, particularly out on the keys. Um, it's another, it, it, I think the advantage is Belize uh, but it's a little higher price to me. I, just to be honest, that's why it's further down the list. But uh, but don't forget, in, in Belize, they speak English. It's their language. Belize, just just in, just in case you didn't know or may have forgotten, Belize was not a Spanish colony like the other countries in Central America. It was an English colony. Got its freedom in 1982. And uh, it, so they speak English and they use the dollar as the currency. I don't know why they don't use a British pound, but they use the dollar as the currency. So you have, may have in some ways easier, easier go of it there. If you're worried about not speaking Spanish, you don't need it in Belize because they, English is their official language. Um, Costa Rica, next, Panama, I, you know, they're, they're on my list here, five and six, put either one, five, six, six, Panama, but five, Belize, or the other way around. Already explained to you why they're a little lower on my list, but in terms of modernity, I think I got that right. Uh, they are, they, they're very, very, Panama City is just, it's just a modern city. It's just a modern city. It, it is a gleaming city, really is. Uh, Panama City, check it out, Google it. Panama City skyline. You think you're in New York back in the days when New York was the Big Apple and then we, we all loved it. Um, so, yeah, 
those two cities and in Costa Rica, by the way, again, little insight here. They almost consider themselves your, well, they do. They consider themselves not Latino. They consider themselves European. <laughs> so it has a very, if you're more prone to living in a European country, uh, one nearby, Costa Rica. Seriously, Costa Rica. Now, if you really want to get a European country, Uruguay, further south. Uruguay is so Italian, they speak Spanish with an Italian accent. True. So, and you walk down uh, Montevideo, I think the, the capital, and you'd swear you were in Italy. So check that one out too. Check that out. I think I think you'll like that. And then finally, El Salvador. I don't have anything against El Salvador. Frankly, I don't think I've ever been to El Salvador. I need to go there. I need to find out more about it. But uh, it, again, is a, is a beautiful country for one thing. And uh, the only reason it's at the bottom is I, I know the others better, but I would I would think you'd find it very similar to the uh, those on the top tier, my my top tier rating, Nicaragua, Honduras, um, Guatemala. So that's it. That's the rating. I get asked all the time about it. How would you rate them? That is the official Carib Carter country rating. Carib Carter country rating. And by the way, if you go to ecidevelopment.com, you can get handbooks on. Uh, just about every one of those countries. Free, free, full color handbooks, like 90 pages, tell you where to go, what to do, cost of living, medical, everything about them, free. ECIdevelopment.com. It's Mike Cobb's company. You know, he's he and I do a show every Friday called Open Mike at offshoreclub.com. And uh, it's, it's about investments offshore. And that uh, that's his company, ECI Development, and those handbooks are free, and they are fantastic. You download them, full color, well done, and you can read about every one of those countries there. And uh, I don't know if Mike would agree with me on that rating. I'm going to ask him when we next next time we do our show together. Uh, number four, uh, the number four question I get, uh, and and this is a very good question, and it comes from I know what it comes from the Mad Max report that I do every every Monday because I know it's pretty hard hitting. As I always say, all the rest of Coffee with Carib Carter is all the great reasons you should move to uh, Central America. The Mad Max report are really the bad reasons you need to get out of the U.S. at this point. And, and so I it said to me, aren't you afraid you're going to offend some people when you when you say the negative things you do about where the U.S. is right now? Look, I'm always afraid of offending people. No, none of us want to offend anybody else, you know, needlessly offend other people. And I don't even like to, to get political, despite the fact I was in politics in Washington for more than 40 years. But uh, I remember years ago hearing an interview with Jerry Lewis when he said that John F. Kennedy once told him, never say anything political because you lose 50 percent of your audience. So let me put something in perspective here. I think... I think we've got a mess on our hands in this country. I'm just going to say it outright. And it's a serious mess in our hands. And I don't think it's going to get better. I'm just going to say it. Um, and I don't want you, I don't want you to have to be one of those who suffers from it. Uh, financially, or frankly, physically, your own personal safety. And in terms of your own freedom, too. You know, you have less freedom now past year and a half, the freedom in this country. Look, when the governor of one of our states, New Jersey, imposes draconian measures, lockdowns, until a year and a half ago, the term lockdown had never been used other than in prisons. And that's the term that Fauci and the deep state and 48 of the 50 governors used for what they did to the American people. Was it necessary? I think you're going to find, well, Fauci said it wasn't in the emails, secret emails that were released when he told Hillary Clinton's people, mask, you don't need the mask. It doesn't even work. Okay. Lockdown. And the governor of New Jersey said, when they said, well, you're not allowing people to go to church. You're not allowed them a freedom association. You know, you're not allowed them the right to privacy anymore. Tell them have to burn all this. And what about, the, what about the constitution? And the governor of New Jersey, Murphy said, I didn't even give the Bill of Rights a second thought. I'm 74 years old. I never thought I would hear that in my life. 
I'm just telling you, I never thought in my life I would hear that in America. Our country was built on the Bill of Rights. So the Bill of Rights, if you want the Bill of Rights, you need to move south of our border. I'm just telling you, because you're going to have more rights. Now, let me put that in perspective. Does that mean that I think that the politicians who rule those countries are nicer people than those ruling ours now? Well, first of all, three weeks ago, the president of the United States had his National Security Council issue a dictate that, I'm not making this up, folks, look it up. If you are caught harboring anti-government sentiments, that's the term, that's what it says. This is a dictate from the White House. If you are caught harboring anti-government sentiments in America now, which is kind of how our country was founded, uh, you can be declared a domestic terrorist and arrested. At which point you'll fall under the Patriot Act, which means you get no Miranda rights and no right to a speedy trial. Okay, you may languish in jail a long time, which a lot of people are right now, by the way. Remember what Putin said to Biden about why are you now operating a gulag in America? We got rid of ours in Russia. Um, so you're never going to have that south of the, bo south of the border. There is no dictate from a security council of any president down there to that effect. If you harbor anti-government, that's thoughts, folks. And not, not if you say something or do something, if they think, decide you're thinking that. So you're not going to have that now. Is that because they're such wonderful people, the rulers of those countries? I don't think so. They are politicians. It's because they don't have the apparatus to enforce that kind of thing. All right. Let me make clear that. They don't have all the alphabet agencies, DHS, FBI, CIA, DEA, ATF, to enforce all these rules. They just don't have it. They don't have the money to do it. And that's why you're freer. It's not because they have good, pure hearts, okay? <laughs> but they are limited again by what they can afford to do. And that's why I say this. So that, that you know, I get so many questions about that. Do you really think it's freer there now than it is here? That I have to answer that question, and I will not. I will not do you the disservice and the dishonor of not answering you honestly. And remember, I'm saying this as somebody who worked with politicians, oh my God, for over 40 years in Washington. And during that whole time, now imagine how many I worked with during that whole time. <laughs> a lot. I have the scars and everything to prove it. I may, I, maybe I can name on one hand those that were, I can, I would look back and say what honorable people. Of course, number one was I had the wonderful joy and privilege of working with Reagan. And, uh, but you know, he wasn't a politician. He, he was an actor turned literally public servant. Okay. And so, yeah, um, you know, he just, there, there was a grace about him and a love of country and a love of the American people, okay? There's the difference. To Ronald Reagan, he was an American, and he loved Americans. Unfortunately, shortly after he was president, we got a president who declared in Germany, I'm a citizen of the world. And I used to say to my wife, you know, sweetheart, you're lucky you have a president of your country. I'm stuck with a citizen of the world, okay? so. <laughs> So down there, it's not that they're the most wonderful people on the face of the earth, but they're more, and they're certainly not Reagan-esque, but they are limited into what they can do to people, okay? And, and, and so you do at this point have more freedom, and that will continue, and I think it will expand. One reason it will expand is because you're going to be there, okay? You're going to be there. So let me finish up this little segment here, this question. If I say, somebody said, aren't you afraid you're going to offend some people and they won't want to, and because you've said things that they don't like about their icons, you know, the Biden regime and those people that they won't want to move down. I bought, I don't want them as neighbors. <laughs> Let me just say it, okay? <laughs> you know, that may, that there may be out of everybody who watches Coffee with Carob Carter, I may have gotten one email, maybe two, that objected to it. And you know what? There are some people I don't want as neighbors. 
it, it, Franklin Roosevelt once said, you can tell a person by the enemies they make and people who want to turn down there into what has become up here now, okay, with all the, the race hatred and the old hate the young and the young hate the old and the rich hate the poor and the poor hate the rich and the black and blah, 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 blah. I don't want it. So don't bother. Don't bother moving down. You've created your nirvana here. Enjoy it. Okay. So 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 that's that's my response to that about are you afraid to offend people? I don't want to offend anybody. I don't I don't want to offend anyone. But more important to me, I want to if I have to offend a couple of them to be friend you, then I want you as my friend and as my neighbor because we share the same love of liberty and the same joie de vie, uh, to use French for moving to a Spanish-speaking culture. Um, and, and that's the people I want to hang with, okay? So, so that brings me to my fifth. But the, the fifth question I get most often, I wrote them down here. So um, it's central. And this is, I think, and this, we're going to close on this just about. Is Central America really a good investment? Because I keep telling you that over again, don't I? More and more increasingly recently. Uh, is it a good investment? I think it's a great investment. It's a great investment. You know, let me say something. Even if you're not going to move there, still buy the property now. Buy it now. Okay? Um, I consider it the, and, and I work with a lot of the top financial analysts and, and experts in this country right now in my real job being the president of offshore dot club is not my real job this is a labor of love for you labor my labor of love for you my real job is working with these investment analysts and let me tell you something if you get a i'm working with one who is his investment advice is reaping a 20 percent per year return which is pretty fantastic um the, the mutual fund, I'll tell you, is 10%. It ain't. Mutual fund, really, if you really get down to it, it's about 4.9, I think it is. Um, if I, I just read the other day that the, you know, look, the top mutual, one of the top mutual funds in the country, or the college, university endowments, right? Because remember, they've told us we are the best, we're the brightest, we got the top. Of the Their return, 10 year return is 49 which is kind of the average for mutual funds. So don't buy that. There was a great book by a guy named Fred Shred. Fred Shwed. Another great name. Fred Shwed. It was actually written in 1940. I was listening to Warren Buffett the other day. He was joking about it. And he was saying, don't, don't, the book, theme of the book is essentially don't listen to these Wall Street and, and talk TV talking head types. It was his little before, so it was radio talking heads. But he said, uh, the name of, of Fred's book is Where Where Are All the Customers Yachts? Okay. So and but so when it comes to investments, don't think that you can put your money into mutual funds up here and you're gonna get this great return. Um, you know, the the old coffee can thing and all. Yeah, there are some, but you really need someone like some of these folks I'm working with now, the new watch you'll get so you'll start hearing about it. There's a new well, I'm working at has a, a program called A Better Way to Wealth, uh, Tim Melvin. And, and if you see that, buy. Whatever he tells you to buy, and he's giving away picks left and right that are fantastic. Um, because you, you have to have that now. Look, let me tell you something. I just, I'm reading a great book now by Free Pre Freeman's Press where the guy points out, if you put your money in the bank, okay, it's one hundredth of a one percent. The interest you get on it, which means in 10 years you lose, let's say you put 100,000, in 10 years you're going to lose half your money, and, and in, in 20 years you're, you're going to lose uh, three quarters of it, okay? Because inflation, and that's with inflation at 3%, inflation is really the government's now admitting that it's 6%, and it's really if you go to Shadow Facts. Uh, uh, John Williams uh, website, it's really about 13%. So you're looking, you need an investment. You need an investment. That's, that's, let me get back to my main point here. There's some good stocks. Okay. There's some good stocks and better way to wealth is going to recommend some to, some to you that, you know, 
full disclosure here. I love the guy. I work with him. He really does know stuff. But another way is these offshore investments. There's a population inversion. Remember I told you Larry Schlesser said we've never had, never had the influx of people buying we do now. Mike Cobb owns ECI Development, five res five residential resort developments. He said we've, ne we've never had this kind of response. Let me give you an example. Here's, how, here's what I call a good return on investment. We helped Offshore.Club help Mike with, uh, I remember telling you about this, development that uh, Atlantida, 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 let me get it right. Uh, right, very near where I just bought in La Ceiba, beachfront community. Um, they were selling the homes for, I think, 90000 and they put tw eight on the market, pre-construction deal, great deal, beautiful homes, beautiful homes are getting ready to build. They're right on the beach. And they were gone within 48 hours, gone. So they're getting ready to do another 12, but the price is going to go up 10%. I'm talking to you about investments now. Suppose you had bought one of the originals, You've just made 10% in 48 hours. That's the kind of market I'm talking about. The house I just bought, 32,000 on the beach, two bedroom, one bath, gorgeous, gorgeous home, gorgeous home. Remember my interview with Chris Barrett? I hope you watch that. If not, go to offshore.club, go back to the coffee with Carol Carter. I think it was three weeks ago. He's a developer where I bought. And he has a bunch of other good homes at that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, two other homes at that same price, and then some a little more expensive, still an incredible price. These are like mansions. Um, and he's having the same thing, you know. People just knocking down the door. The other day, I sent you all an email. Those of you, of you who get the Gazette, I sent you an email about an incredible off-the-grid property in Costa Rica, okay? Because a lot of you say, hey, Card, how about talking about Costa Rica a little bit? Got a note from... from uh, Sherry, uh, or rather, uh, Carrie Share, the, the 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 contact person, I said, Carter, you sent that out. It's gone already. Okay, and fortunately, she has others too. These names I'm giving you now. If you, you, you can't, you, you know, write to me at carabcarter7 at gmail.com, and I'll send you the contact information for these people. Okay, I'll send it to you because they, these are great people, and they've got some homes at incredible prices. And she she. Uh, um, uh, it, she has more of these too. Okay. Uh, let me get her name right here. It's Cassidy, I guess, Cher. Um, we just corresponded a couple of times. So I, pardon my not getting things straight there. But, but the, uh, so these are, these are all people who they're seeing this influx. So what you need to do, you're going to get a return on investment that's going to dwarf anything you're going to get in the market. The market's good right now. The market's good. I, my prediction is going to stay good for another year, a little more maybe. Ray Dalio feels the same way. You know, um, some, of, some, of the, the, um, some of the others who, Shaw Galani feels the same way. Some of the other people I really respect, uh, the, Warren Buffett, uh, Charlie Munger. Uh, look, the Fed's going to prop up the market. <laughs> they make no mistake. The last thing that falls in this country is going to be the market because they're going to prop up that to the end. They're pouring money into the 40% of all money in circulation right now has been printed in the last year. So they're going to prop the market up. So it is a good time in the market. But your problem is your return is not as high as they're making believe. I'd say if you get a good 5% return, uh, you know, the, the, you know the, you're going to hit this mutual fund. So please be careful. You know, there, 1970, there were 355 mutual funds. Today, there are 233 of those are gone. And of those that remain, only 24 are beating the index by more than 1% a year. Okay? So be careful. You're going to get a much better return, but you got to get in now. Because these property, you know, I told my wife, who's considerably younger than me, this is a great investment for you, this property. You're getting it for 32 in 10 years. It's going to be worth at least 10 times that much, maybe 20. It's beachfront, folks. Remember what Mark Twain said, buy property, they invest in property. They can't make more of it, okay? Uh, matter of fact, you, you keep it long enough and you're going to be like those who invested in Coke first. I just read today. The, uh, when Coke came on the market, it was $40 a share. If you had bought a share, now they went public in 1918, so that's 100 years ago. Today, you would have $5 million, okay? <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Say what? Yeah. Uh, so 
honest to God, I think you're going to find something comparable on this property. There's a population inversion. Americans are moving down there, a better life, sun, sand, and surf, freedom, okay? And just the good life at a great price, a chance to start anew, okay? A chance to start anew and be, be part of something exciting. And to, to as Lord Tennyson said, to build to, to build a newer world, okay? And so it's a great investment. This property is a great investment. You got to get in now. You always want to be where the money's going, okay? Okay? You want to be the bell cow, not at the end of the herd. So so this is this is the time to do it. And it's real. It's real. You're not investing in some stock that's you know, up and down. Anywhere. You're investing in real property, okay, which invariably goes up. And even if there's a collapse here, it's just going to elevate it more down there, okay? That's what's going to happen. So... So that's the answer to the investment. Yes, invest, but do it now. The early bird doesn't just get the worm. It gets the wealth, okay? And that's what I want for you. If I were you, I'd just go ahead and move down too, but at least invest. If you got a little nest egg, invest. And don't, you know, remember, gorgeous homes down there. For Look for the under 50,000s first. I'm just telling you that the way I do. And then if you have a little more, you want to invest more, do it, okay? But that's 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 my advice to somebody who is actually doing it. I'm very pleased with with what's happening there. And finally, finally, things say people say to me, why do you always end with something motivational? I'll tell you why. Because I know what I'm asking you to do is takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage. I'm asking you to be a pioneer. Okay, because uh, at this point you are still a pioneer, just like those who move west in our country incredibly brave people. Well, that's what you're doing. You're staking a claim to a new land and a land that you're going to change just by your own presence there. All right. So that's why I always end on motivation. I'm going to do it again today. You're, you are like, this is something I keep in front of me in my office every day. Some of you even looking at it, if you can read any of it are saying, yeah, I know what that is and I love it. Let me read it to you, okay? This is from Steve Jobs, one of the last speeches he ever gave. And, well, let me read it because you're going to recognize yourself. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify them or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do to them is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see them as genius. Because the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world, the world are the ones who do it. And that's you. You are changing the world, and I'm proud to be your friend. I'm proud to have you as, as a part of the care of Carter Cadre, and I'm proud that every day we end the same way and we fulfill this. Let's do this thing. Thanks for joining me. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us at the Offshore Club. For more information on the Offshore Club or to contact Carib Carter, visit www.offshore.club today. www.offshore.club. That's www.offshore.club. See you next time at the Offshore Club.